Hi, my name is Christian Sparks. You may know me online as Hippo Wombat, and today I'm going to walk you through a few easy steps into adding demolitions deployment to your Unreal Engine project using simple demolition system, an upcoming asset on the Unreal Engine marketplace. Let's get started. So the first thing that we need to do with our empty scene is drag in the BP demolitions deployment actor. This actor contains all the logic that we need to deploy the grenade, landmine, and satchel charge blueprints included in this pack. So by default, we can press the one key to deploy a grenade. We can also press the two key to deploy a landmine. The landmine has to be placed uh, wherever the mesh turns green. Uh, we can't place it anywhere that doesn't align with the surface. Um, if it does align with the surface but the slope angle is too sharp, we can't place it there either. However, the placement distance away from the player that you're allowed to place the mesh is a configurable variable in this system, as well as the slope threshold at which you're allowed to place the landmine. So if I place the landmine here, it is live. If anything collides with it, it explodes. The same goes... The same general logic goes for the BP satchel charge, which is activated by pressing the 3 key by default. It can be placed on the ground only a certain distance away from you, and it has to be aligned to a certain surface. One of the key differences with the satchel charge, however, is that the default slope values that it can take are much more extreme than that of the landmine. So you can place it along a surface perpendicular to the ground, or even more extreme than that. So if I place this satchel charge here, by default, after three seconds, the satchel charge will explode. Similarly, if we place the satchel charge and press the T key to detonate it, it will detonate. Whether or not to use a timer or the detonation key are both totally configurable variables as well as the timer length if you decide to use the timer. Alternatively, you can also set the satchel charge to simply explode when stepped on simply. Another thing that we can have a quick look at is the BP demolitions deployment actor in our world space. This actor has some variables that we can take a look at editing. We have some debug values to show us what the slope that we're using is when we're placing any of our uh, landmines or satchel charges. So whenever the satchel charger landmine collides with the surface, it will showcase the surface slope. The placement reach uh, allows us to tweak how far away from the player camera any of our uh, landmines or satchel charges can be placed. The visualization type for our placement, which shows the line trace behavior, which we can show for one second using this here, will show us the line trace behavior from the camera to the world position that the object is being placed. We can also dictate the landmine slope threshold, the force of the explosion, the particle to use, the mesh to use, the explosion sound to use, as well as the explosion range, which affects other physical actors, the step on range, which is how close you can be or far away you can be from the landmine before it explodes, and the how far away the landmine will check for other explosive actors to also detonate them. The satchel charge has several similar variables um, with the addition of whether or not to use a timer, the timer length, and whether or not to be able to detonate the satchel charge manually. The grenade has similar variables as the other actors with the addition of whether or not to make the grenade sticky so that it'll stick to the first surface that it hits or explode on impact which means that it'll explode as soon as it touches any surface. You may notice that when these explosions occur some damage is dealt to the floor. This isn't done through any meshes or projection based decals. This visual is actually applied to the surface material itself by masking in different PBR texture sets using distance field info. As you can see here, the BP hit mask actor, which is spawned wherever a grenade, landmine, or satchel charge explodes, it will use that location data to mask in the damage visuals uh, to a theoretical second layer of the material. Several material instances in this pack are provided to showcase different visual styles that you can use, which are all very easily set up using the parameters provided. 
you simply go into the material instance templates that we have and change the diffuse, normal, and specular textures for the top layers, the tiles, or the bottom layers, uh, the damage texture. There are some additional values down here, such as the distance field contrast softness, uh, the masking texture scale, which is the texture that is used to dynamically mask in uh, the layers from each other, uh, the roughness for the top and the bottom layers, the texture mask power, so the contrast of that masking texture that we talked about before, uh, the strength of it, again, which is used uh, in calculating the strength of the white versus black values in the alpha masks for each layer, and the texture scales um, for the top and bottom PBR texture sets. This pack has been submitted to the Unreal Engine Marketplace and is currently undergoing evaluation. If this pack is already available on the Marketplace at the time that you're watching this, I hope that this video will help you understand how to properly set up the system uh, to correlate with your Unreal Engine project. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.